The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Portland, Oregon, on your new fire apparatus, job number 30608. Please utilize this job number when referencing your new apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's go ahead and start down at the front bumper area. Starting in the front bumper, just in between, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks on the right and left side. Moving over to the driver's side, you'll find your electronic siren mounted in the bumper. Moving up from that location to the headlight cluster, you'll find your high and low beam and turn indicator. Moving to the center in the grill area, you'll find two emergency forward-facing warning lights. Up on each right and left-hand side of the fender, you'll find dual air horns. Located directly in the center, you'll find a pull handle for lifting the hood. You'll find a convex mirror on the lower section of your mirror cluster, and at the very top, you'll find a flat portion of the mirror cluster. Moving all the way to the top of the apparatus, you'll find running lights located across the top, and also the location of your emergency warning light bar. Let's go ahead and take a look down at the very base one more time, a little close up of those tow hooks. These are open ended tow hooks on the right and left hand side. Close up here of the Whalen siren. You can see here on the right and left hand side of the Pierce logo the emergency warning lights. Headlight cluster, just to the rear of that headlight cluster, you'll find a side facing emergency warning light located on the operator or driver's side you'll find your air intake and down on the fender well you'll find a turn indicator. Generalized view here of the side of your apparatus. Let's go ahead and take a look down at the uh, section here. This is going to be a Michelin X12 R22.5 tire with alcohol wheels. Located on the step area is where your fuel tank is located. As we move closer in, you'll see this is the location of your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel with a silver cap. It's a 50 US gallon uh, tank. Your DEF tank is 4.5. Moving on to the side of the apparatus, generalized view here. Let's go just inside the cab on the operator side. As we move inside, we'll find this yellow label located at the base of the seat. This houses information here, manufactured by Pierce Manufacturing. July of 2017. It has information here for your job number, also has work order number, gross vehicle weight ratings, and also the tire limited maximum speed of 75 miles an hour, and also the chassis that this is built on, which is a Freightliner. It also has at the very bottom the VIN number for the vehicle. Moving upward to the left hand corner, you can find the device as it references in addition with the fluid capacity for each of those devices and also the type of fluid that's required for that device. Just beneath this yellow placard here, you'll find at the base of the seat on the floorboard the on off switch for your master battery. And to engage the apparatus, this is going to be the key located on the lower section left knee of the operator. There's also a label located here for height, length, and gross vehicle weight rating. It also offers your job number. At the very top of the switches is your speed control. Just down from speed control, the on off switch is your resume, accelerate, set, and coast switch. Just beneath that, you'll find your headlight controls. And then at the very base, you'll find the increase and decrease for your dimmer for your dash lights. Back on to the uh, manufactured information here for height, length, and gross vehicle weight rating. Let's start in the lower left hand corner of your dash. This is your transmission temperature. Moving up from that, the gauge indicates your water temperature. Further up at the very top left corner, this is going to be your oil pressure. Locate the two large gauges in the center. One is your RPMs, your tachometer, 
and the other is your miles per hour, your speedometer. As we move up to the very top right hand corner, you'll find a dual gauge here. This is offering the amount of fuel in your fuel tank in addition with the level of your DEF tank. Just beneath that, you'll find air pressure for your front air and rear air. Moving just to the right, you'll find in the upper right hand corner next to the gauges, your filter minder, which indicates your air filter restriction, and also the normal spin ATC, which is your traction control. Located in the center, you'll find your transmission pad. Over to the right, you'll find your pump engaged, OK to pump, OK to pump and roll, and your tank rack down, and also a water level indicator. Those are all indicators, not switches. Moving to the right, you'll find your parking brakes, pull to apply the parking brake, push to release. Also information here regarding your PTO shift. As we move just to the right of the parking brake, we'll find a bank of switches. In those switches here, we'll find your PTO pump, your high idle, your alarm reset, a digital readout, You'll find three indicators on the right, do not move the truck, okay for high idle, and a battery indicator. Down in the lower section, you'll find your engine regen, the switch for your locker for your rear wheels, mirror heat, your engine brake high and low setting, a future location for a switch, and then your peer seat belt information. Let's move back up to the very top, just talk a little bit about some of these switches. In this protected switch location, you'll find your PTO for pump. There are clear instructions on the left-hand side. Uh, pay attention to those. High idle and alarm reset. Moving down from that, you'll find your regen switch. You're locked for your rear locker. Mirror heat and also the engine brake high and low setting. Just to the right of that, you'll find your seat belt display information currently displayed in red, indicating that there's someone occupying the seat but not belted. You'll find your do not move truck, okay to engage the high idle and also a battery switch. Just beneath that you'll find the climate control center. Underneath the climate control you'll find two barrel style 12 volt plugs. Overhead of the operator you'll find your emergency master, your lower zone, rear zone, siren horn selector, left and right scene switch. Let's move slightly to the right of this location overhead once again. You'll find the dump master rear scene and the dump valve, some future switch locations and all the way to the right your siren control and also your PA mic. Once again to the left hand side you'll find the rope for your air horn, the dump master once again protected switch, rear scene and the dump valve also in a protected switch. As we move just further to the right, you'll find your public announcement system and siren control. Over the visor, over the operator's head, you'll find component information regarding the Daimler Truck North America. Generalized view here of the side of your pump panel. We'll talk about this in detail and all of the individual uh, components in this area also. This is just to familiarize yourself the general location of each of those. First, let's start down in the lower section. You can find your number one and also the driver's side auxiliary inlet drains, color coded in red and black. Generalized view, we'll look at this section first. As we start, you have your pump drain, pull to uh, open the drain valve, push to close. This is your auxiliary inlet, two and a half inch. This is your air inlet. In the center, large diameter intake. You'll also find that warning label in the upper left regarding pressurized caps. This is going to be your test pressures for 150, 200, and 250. Fire primer with instructions on the left hand side to maintain the engine at 1000 RPMs. Number one discharge located in red, two and a half inch. Generalized view here of all of your discharges. We'll break down those individually here next. First, let's start with the tank to pump. 
the tank fill and recirculating line located just above the tank fill. In green, this is your large diameter passenger side discharge. Number two, passenger side discharge in orange. This is your engine cooler. This is a turn, not a pull. Number one, driver side discharge in the red color. Number one, cross lay in yellow. Number two, cross lay in white. This is a indicator regarding your pump engaged will illuminate when it's okay when your pump is operating properly. On the left, you have your water level in blue, the pump valves on the right hand side. These are your vacuum and pressure test ports. They are currently plugged. As we look at the set of switches overhead, you have panel lights, left and right seam, and future location switches. Your water level or tank level here, indicating that it is empty, currently needs refilling. Your pump intake. Pump discharge. Let's move now, move to the back of the pump area. Just overhead, you'll find your cross lays here. Generalized view here of the rear of the apparatus. If you look just forward of those front wheels, you'll find your wheel chocks stored here. These are folding wheel chocks. Let's go ahead and move now to the compartment just above this, and you'll find your shore powder, shore power battery outlet. Also located just at the very top, you'll find a tank visual indicator and also a side scene light side marker light. You'll find your tandem Michelin wheels and Alcoa tires and wheels rather. Located between the two you'll find a side facing warning. When this compartment is open this location is for bottle storage. You can store up to two SCBA bottles in this location. Let's move now to the very rear of the compartment. In this roll-up compartment, you can see there's adjustable shelving and also lighting with inside the compartment. At the very top of the apparatus, you'll find a grab handrail, side-facing flood, and also an emergency warning light. Let's take a look at the rear general view here of the rear of your apparatus. Let's break down some of the components here. There are two reflectors on each side. These are not lights. Moving up from that location, you'll find your cluster of brake, turn, backup, and also warning. You'll also find the hub here for your shore inlet. There's also power information here regarding the rear dump chute and also your hose bed lights. Located on the left and right hand side you'll find this compartment door for your rigid hose storage. Moving up to the top and the rear, you'll also find a visual indicator for your tank level. Next to it, you'll find two rear-facing floodlights. Just on the outer edges, you'll find emergency warning lights. Down at the base of the apparatus, you'll find two closed tow hooks. Located in the center, just off, you'll find the direct tank fill two and a half ball valve. There are two of those. You'll also find your rear dump in this location directly in the center. Let's go ahead and move up to the top of the apparatus. This is the location of your water fill for tank or top fill. There is also a rear facing cab light, general utility light at the very top. Let's take a look in some of the compartments here. Same as the opposite side and this compartment has lighting and also an adjustable shelf option. Located in the front, lighting and additional adjustable shelf. Underneath you'll find your exhaust and be cautious is where you park. There is also a warning label regarding hot exhaust temperatures. 
located on the left hand side of the body. This is your power equipment rack on off switch and up or down for the lifting mechanism currently displayed in its down position to access your water tank. Let's go and go back midship location. We'll talk about the components in this area. First, let's start with the large chrome port. This is going to be your large diameter intake. You'll also have the pressure hazard warning label regarding pressurized caps. At the very base, you'll find all of your discharge drains clearly color-coded and labeled. A number two passenger side two and a half inch discharge. Your large diameter passenger side discharge in green. An access door and slightly above the access door, you'll find a work light. Let's move to the cab area located in the passenger side cab area. You'll find entrance or perimeter lighting in addition with a warning label regarding a slip possibility. On the floorboard you'll find your electronic siren. As we move to the seat area you'll find this fixed seat with a storage compartment underneath the seat area. Let's go back outside to the front of the cab. You'll find right and left latches here. To access the engine compartment, release these latches. Grab the front lever and pull, allowing the hood to open. On the side, you'll find your right and left turn indicators. This is indicating your dual air horns. Side facing emergency warning light. Generalized view here of the front and side of your apparatus. Congratulations, Portland, Oregon, on your new apparatus, job number 30608. If you have any questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.